Hey everybody, Thomas here. And we have the pleasure of two of the smartest individuals when it comes to setting and sharpening blades. We have Mr. Robert Westfall and his son, Howard Westfall. These two individuals right here over the past couple years have sharpened and set more blades than I have probably seen. Um, it's amazing what they can do. He's been running a Cook's Cat Claw sharpener and setter for a long time. And we're actually gonna talk about something a little, little bit later on in video three. Uh, we bought this new Wood Miser BSM 250. It's a new sharpening system. But this is going to be video one. Video one is going to be over the uh, little talking question and answer here in the beginning. Then we're going to go into the inspection of a blade and then the cleaning of the blade. Followed by video two will be the setting of a blade on the Cook's Cat Claw Sharper. And video three will be the sharpening on their new tool, the BSM 250 from Wood Miser. All right, so first things first, tell us about yourself, Robert and Howard. Well, good evening. We're out here in the barn. That's where I do all my stuff is out here in the barn. And uh, I had all this room. I wasn't doing anything. I got rid of all my horses and don't have any cows. So we just made a saw blade sharpening business out of it and have plenty of room in here. And it's crude. But blade sharpening is not the cleanest thing in the world. It's not really nasty, but it's you, you create some dust and you wouldn't want to carry it into your house. So I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, and and uh, here in the last couple of years, my son decided he wanted to help me. He said, Daddy, let's start us a business. And he has got out here and he's took initiative and really paid attention and he is doing very well. He's doing a good job. I'm really proud of him. This is Howard. And uh, first off, Howard, Howard would do the cleaning and the inspecting. And then he got to where he was doing the setting. So he pretty much does all the cleaning and inspecting and setting. And I do a lot of setting in this chair. <laughs> <laughs> I had got behind on my setting down and I'm trying to catch up. But anyway, Howard's doing a great job, and we have been able to keep up with our customers as they bring the blades in. We could keep uh, not not a long period of wait time. However, in January I had knee surgery, and I've been under the weather for a few weeks, so the blades just piled back up on us again. So I got to thinking. Uh, well, Howard can clean well, he inspects, he's got a good eye, and he sets good. Now he just needs to sharpen. And I've been running a cook cat claw sharpener for years, since, since 97. Good machine, can't say anything bad about them, they're a really good machine. However, you have to shape that rock to fit the profile of that blade. And he, Howard could have done that, but I didn't want him to have to do that. So I invested in a BMS 250 wood miser sharpener, runs a CBN wheel, has a fixed wheel. That you buy the wheel that fits the profile of the tooth and all you do is whenever you put it on there and you get it lined up and you start it, every tooth is exactly the same. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. I will say this right now, I do like the wood miser sharpener, but uh, we, we, we've got quite a bit of business going on out here. We enjoy doing it. We're right here at home, father and son, and we haven't killed one another yet. It's Talk good. close, but we haven't killed one another yet. We work on it daily. <laughs> we work on it. It takes work. So walk me through, what do you do when you're, uh, first off, the cleaning the inspection? What are you looking for? You do this out. Cleaning and inspection, when we receive a blade, a lot of our... Uh, First off, a lot of our customers bring back blades that we've resharpened sometimes multiple times. We do get new blades. However, a lot of them are rusted. Some of them are not. So we run them through a, an electric motor with a wire wheel and it knocks off the sand, the rust, grit, sawdust, and enables me to inspect the blade for cracks, uh, chipped teeth, 
broken off teeth, etc. So we don't want to sharpen a blade that would hinder someone while using it cutting logs. So anything we find that we don't feel is is that so, we would use actually on our on our machines, we wouldn't want someone else to use it. So the inspection part is 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 crucial because a lot of times you'll find a cracked blade and it's hard to see unless you really know what you're looking for and I can spot them pretty good and that's pretty much the cleaning and the cleaning part of it. When we find a crack in a blade we can go no further. On a cracked blade if we go ahead and clean it and set it and sharpen it then what's going to happen is the man that's using that blade he's going to get halfway through the log and it's going to break and anybody that's ever had a blade breaking a log knows you got to dig it out of there sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do so once we find a crack in a blade that's the end of the that's the end of that blade we go no further we just write the man's name on it mark the crack if he wants to see it and we put it in a discard pile so as you can see right here, see if I can get this to zoom in or focus on it, right where it says, right above the A, you've got one singular crack in this. Pretty good crack. It's a pretty good crack. That blade right there would not have lasted very long. I would like maybe five foot into a log before she popped right off. If that much. So a cracked blade, that's something you discard that blade. What Robert has here in front is something else you're going to talk about. Yeah, this, this blade here, whoever was using it, uh, uh, Mr. Davis, a customer of mine, he either hit his log stops or, or something in a log and he tore, tore all these teeth off. This one here can just break it off. It's, and, and there's teeth going all the way around this blade. And it's just, whenever you get a blade that has teeth gone all in a row, it's a bad blade. You, you just really can't repair that blade to where it will give a customer good service. Now, if you've got a blade that's got a tooth gone here, one over there, one over here, you know, four or five teeth, but they're not consecutive in a in concession, succession, then you can sharpen that blade and it'll still give you good life. I, t I try to mark those blades and tell my customers, hey, use this blade to, to knock the slabs off or something like that, and then put another good blade on there to go ahead and cut your good lumber with it. Yep. And one other thing that we've seen before is when a blade gets a kink in it. Now, there's there are some people saying that you can go ahead and take the kink out. Uh, I myself wouldn't mess with a kink blade just because it might cause issue with tracking, and it's just it's also where there's been a, a stress point in there. It usually happens when it when a blade pops off a meal. Yeah. It'll, 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 it'll and then it. it'll it'll put a bend in it or it'll crack it too. That's usually you'll get cracks in those areas too. I don't know if y'all have run into this before, but when someone breaks a bandsaw blade, welding it back together, I do not see that being a good idea. I mean, some people might have a differing opinion, but if you break a blade based on what a cost of a blade is, I just don't see it being worth it to try to weld it back together. They're not that good at welders anymore. <laughs> That's, I've seen Robert's weld, and it looks like a hot mess. but it's like a bunch of boogers piled up. <laughs> But it will hold. Let me, let me talk about that. And I've, done, I've talked about this before in a previous video that Thomas has done in here. You run that blade, it's a brand new blade, and you run it and it breaks in the well. Well, obviously it was a bad well. That rarely happens. That's not common. But go ahead and repair that blade or find someone who can repair that. On the other hand, if you've got a blade that you have run and run and run and resharpened and run it and you find a crack in it or it breaks, just throw that blade away because what has happened is I've done it before. When I first started in the snow mill business back in the, in the mid-90s, I broke some blades and wasn't it, well, it just, I took it to a pipe shop and they re-welded them for me for like $3 a piece and they did a good job. I came back, I put them on the sawmill didn't run them no time and they broke somewhere else that blade going around and around that the wheels on that sawmill is like it's bending not to the extreme you bend a coat hanger or a piece of wire but it's bending and it puts stress cracks in that blade so when that blade breaks if you've run it for a while thank it for its service and throw it in the scrap pile 
There you go. All right, so we've talked about some of the inspection stuff, so let's go ahead and see the actual inspection process. And also, I noticed during this video, I hear a cricket that's been going off, so hopefully it's not picking up only that noise, but yeah. that's Robert's buddy over there. That's yeah. old Jiminy. Old Jiminy Cricket. So yeah. we're going to go over to his cleaning location, and then we're going to go ahead and inspect a blade. We're going to get a nasty-looking blade. All right, folks, we're over here with Mr. Howard, and he's going to show you what this blade looks like before. Then he's going to go ahead and sharpen everything. And we'll talk about it after. Clean. I'm going to clean it. It's a standard 154 to 58 inch blade. It's got rust on it. It's got wood wood debris on it. And this is our cleaner. It's kind of loud. Always use eye protection. Yep. Always use eye protection, gloves, all that stuff. You can see how he pulls it through there and that dust coming off. He's putting some pressure on there, but that's just two wire wheels stuck together. Now he's going to invert the blade, so you just flick it with his wrist there, do the inside. The inside is where it's going to have a lot of pitch buildup sometimes. He's just working it through there. This one's actually pretty good. Yes, it is. You gotta invert the blade back. So every blade that comes out of here, they will make sure it's in, it's, it's in the correct direction. Now, if you unspool it, you could possibly invert it, but every blade here will be in the correct orientation as how it should ride on your mill. All right, now I'm gonna inspect the blade for cracks. And all I do, I, I, I usually check my set, and I can tell that this blade does have some set in it. Probably 21, 22 thousandths. And you can see how clean that blade is. It did clean up quite a bit. And in the light, there's the well joint. In the light, I can see if there's a crack in it. Uh, it, it it'll pop out. It comes natural to me. And also when you're doing this inspection, you're looking at the teeth. I think I just saw a, a rat run by or something. <laughs> what was his name? Hector. Hector, yeah. But yeah, that's just the initial step. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Step two is actually gonna be the setting of the blade. Now, that's one thing that I am not the greatest at. Mr. Robert and Mr. Howard here are phenomenal at setting. I can sharpen a blade pretty well, but setting I always seem to have, a tr to have trouble with. So this is actually gonna be a video to also help me with our cat claw setter that we have up in Tennessee. So again, please like, subscribe, and you need to check out these guys' videos because we're going to try to get them to start a YouTube channel because they are the experts on anything to deal with bandsaw blades. I've learned a lot through these two individuals here, but they are actually the experts, and if they start their own channel, they can do a lot of Q&A with people to make sure that uh, the knowledge is being shared and spread around. What you got, Mr. Robert? I was just going to say, the blades that we sharpen are one inch to two inch. We don't sharpen any big bandsaw blades mm -hmm. like they use on these big vertical mills. But uh, thin kerf, uh, mostly one and a quarter inch is what we deal with. Occasionally, we do some one and a half and occasionally some two inch. But mostly one and a quarter inch blades is what we deal with. So when Thomas says we experts at bandsaws, I want to... <laughs> that go be some that go be some saw filers out there that work with these big giant blades. Now those are saw filers. Mm -hmm. Those guys knows what they're doing. Now we know what we're doing with these, but when you get into the big blades, you'll have to ask the experts, and that's not us. <laughs> See, he's humble too. All right, folks, we're gonna start video number two, sure, but 173, 178 and a half. He's pretty dang close. Just 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 giving it the. Uh, the old one, two with the eye there. Right, set it. Yep, we're going there set. All right, folks, stay tuned for the next video. It's a good one.